In this video, we're going to dive deep into REST APIs and talk about eight advanced interview questions. My name is Kevin Wei. I'm a product manager, and I'm here to help you land your dream job in tech. Understanding REST APIs is crucial to getting your dream software engineering job. In our last video, we talked about nine common REST API interview questions and answers. Today, we're going to dive deep and cover eight more advanced questions and answers. So let's get started. Question one, what's the difference between put, post, and patch? Put and post are very common HTTP methods. The key difference is that put is used to update a specified existing resource, while post is used to create a new resource. There's also the method patch, which is another way of updating a particular resource. The difference between put and patch is that patch alters only the data that is specified, whereas put replaces the entire resource with a new resource comprised of the given data. Before we jump into the next question, if you enjoy these tech interview videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for new videos every single week. This really helps with the algorithm, and we put a lot of effort into these videos with the goal of helping as many people as possible. So your like or comment is really helpful to show your support. On to question number two. What is a payload in the context of a REST API? Payload refers to any data that has been transferred via request or response through the REST API. For instance, if the client makes a GET request, the server will provide a response with the payload. Or the client may provide the payload like in a POST request, where the client is giving the data to the server. Question three, what is a REST message? The concept of messaging refers to the back and forth communication via request and response by the client and server. There's typically a message within every response body associated with the provided status code. This message is one of the most important parts of debugging and testing a REST API. Examples of a message include confirmation a resource was created or that any exceptions were raised. Question four, what are the core components of an HTTP request? There are five components in an HTTP request, method, URI, HTTP version, request header, and request body. First, the method. This may also be called the verb. This refers to operations like get, post, put, delete, etc. URI. This is used to identify the resource, typically using a URL. HTTP version. This indicates the HTTP version that is being used, typically HTTP 1.1 or HTTP 2.0. Request header. This contains the metadata, which can be the message format, cache settings, content format, etc and request body. This contains the content or data that's being sent. Question five, what are the core components of an HTTP response? There are four components in an HTTP response, status code, HTTP version, response header, and response body. The status code provides information about the success or failure of a request. 200 codes indicate success. 400 codes indicate a client side error and 500 indicates a server-side error. The HTTP version indicates the version that's being used. The response header contains response metadata, like content length, content type, date, etc. And the response body, which contains the return data. While there doesn't always have to be a response body in a request, a response should always contain a response body. Question six, what is an item potent method and why are they important? When using RESTful web services, a client may make numerous requests to a server at a time. An item potent method is one that yields the same response regardless of how many times a request is sent. For example, imagine pressing a button on a web page that makes a GET request to a resource. After the nth press of a button, the API response will still be the same as the first press. REST APIs are designed on the principle that the client should not depend upon previous API calls hence why the REST architecture is made to be stateless. Therefore, REST APIs should be made such that their methods are idempotent when possible. Question seven, what's the difference between idempotent and safe HTTP methods? An idempotent method is one that can be called multiple times without changing responses, while a safe method is one that does not change a resource, meaning it may read but not write. For example, a get method is considered to be safe. Question eight, Explain caching in a RESTful architecture. A client may request the same data from a REST API many times. 
In this case, it's beneficial for the response to be cached. This way, less bandwidth is needed and the client may retrieve data faster. Each REST API contains specific metadata related to the caching of responses. For example, the headers of cache control and expires specify what responses may be cached, by whom, and for how long. Now, before we wrap up this video, let's talk a bit about best practices in developing a RESTful web service. When building, you're going to want to consider a few things to make your system even stronger. These include supporting JSON data transfer, using proper status codes, using URI hierarchy to represent the relationship of resources, using item potent HTTP methods, using caching, and incorporating security measures. REST APIs can be easy to use and are powerful, especially when used properly. I hope this video helped paint a deeper picture about REST APIs. And for more tech interview prep content, Exponent has the best resources to help you ace your interview, including in-depth interview courses, private coaching, and a community of experts ready to help you prep for even the toughest questions. Go to tryexponent.com to become a member today. Thanks for watching.